Good morning and welcome to St. Thomas. Uh, for all the friends who are here, brothers and sisters, and the people who are joining us virtually. My name is the Reverend Denise Galloway, Deacon of the Cathedral of the Incarnation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. secrets are here. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin, and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, Come eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. Psalm 34, verses 9 to 14. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who among you loves life? and desires long life to enjoy prosperity. Keep your tongue from evil speaking and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Our second lesson is taken from the book of Ephesians. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is the butchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to the Lord. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I am them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. Praise to you, Lord. God, the eternal self-manifestation of the creator of the universe, who took to himself human nature, is so basic to Orthodox Christianity that without it, the entire thing can crumble and fall apart. The whole structure, all pieces of it, without the incarnation, the belief in the word made flesh, there can be no Christianity, no Christian theology, no Christian spirituality. It is no wonder then that Jesus took the time to teach and such pains to convey to his disciples and the Jews who he is. We see that in general, we see that in a lot of the Gospels. 
But for us, and uh, the way how our electionary has been structured in the last month, we get a full taste of that in John's Gospel. Without his loving attention and patient disposition, neither them or us would be able to live into the knowledge, truth, and understanding of who he is, and that is Jesus, Lord of all, and Messiah. Nor would we be able to experience full union with Christ. And so when we meet Jesus again this morning, he is still being followed by a large crowd because he had miraculously fed them bread However, Jesus wanted them to understand that he came for a much greater purpose than to just produce food. In fact, he came to give people access to eternal life. And so Jesus has been on a mission trying to convey that. Previously, Jesus had answered them and he said, truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not work for the food which perishes, but work for the food which endures to eternal life, which is the Son of Man will give you, for on him the Father God has set his seal. Now, Jesus says, I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. What an audacious thing to say. But this is not just anybody who is saying it. It is our Lord, the Christ. And unlike the disciples who were confused and scandalized, hearing what seemed to be Jesus speaking about cannibalism, this narrative has a familiar ring to us, doesn't it? Eating bread. an incarnational, sacrificial, and Eucharistic emphasis are intertwined in this text. The one we are most familiar with is the Eucharistic language. Jesus used this language when he instituted the Last Supper, and that's the meal that we normally partake of at this table most Sundays. You're just not going to be able to eat that meal. What we're feeding on today instead is the Word of God, and that is okay in our liturgy and in our tradition. This is my body, which is given for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. Very familiar words. To us. This is the time when Jesus visits the meal, the process, us, so that in, with, and under the bread and wine comes the extraordinary presence of the Spirit of Christ. And yes, the bread is the body of Christ. And as you very well know, no, we are not cannibals. And I also don't believe that Jesus is speaking here about the Last Supper either. So, could it be about bread? We all know a lot about bread making, right? Show hands, bread making making bread actually and eating it. 
In fact, my grandmother, and now this was not an educated college woman at all, but this was just a loving grandmother who knew this instinctively that the art of bread making needed to be her strategy to help her grandchild deal with separation anxiety whenever I had to be separated from my mother. So uh, all those elaborate steps, everyone became a fine dance. It was like this dance with an artist and a canvas and she'd break out all the equipment and all the ingredients and when I'm just about ready to pass out because my mother had to leave the house, she would invite me into that space in the kitchen, in the kitchen and then it was on, bread making time. And she taught me how to knead the bread. You know, we didn't have a mix master, nothing like that. This was it. <laughs> and we would knead the dough and watch it raise and knead it a little more and the board and dusting the board with the flour and everything just had to be perfect. So I'm Guyanese, for those of you who don't know that. And so it all had to be all fine. And the dough needed to look a certain way and be smooth on the top and all of that. So is it that Jesus was talking about? Another kind of bread that we're familiar with in our culture is the bread of money. And so in many places, we use that word bread as a reference to money. But Jesus is not teaching us about none of those things, interesting though they are. The words I have spoken to you are full of spirit and life. Friends, hear what Jesus says, with us, before us, and he is speaking about himself as bread and about eating his flesh and his blood. As you may recall, we started this journey in John some weeks ago. And Jesus has been trying all that time to tell the Jews and his disciples who he really is for some time now. He performed the miracle and spread and fed the multitude of people when his disciples would have sent the people away for fear they didn't have enough food to feed the people. And Jesus fed those people, proving that he was beyond material limitations. That was the lesson. And their fear, it was banished. They didn't have to send the people home. And all of a sudden, three loaves of bread and two fish became food for thousands. What a relief that must have been, right? They must have been incredibly satisfied and pleased that that happened. Fear was gone. And Jesus, in their presence, was the realization that Jesus is our provider. But did they hold on to that? Then they saw Jesus walking on water. And as they cowered in fear, he said, it is I, do not be afraid. And that message was also clear. Banish your fear because I, your Lord and God, your Messiah, I am here. Then they went on to Capernaum. Remember that one? 
looking for Jesus. They were looking at one place and, and then they discovered him on the other side of the sea. And they said in utter surprise, Master, when did you come here? The limitations of their fear and their small thinking was still evident with that question. But Jesus, still not willing to give up on this teaching, went deeper. And he used what he hoped to be a spiritual basis to grow their faith and to dispel the idea that he was just only to be associated with food. And so he turned the conversation to himself as he said, I am the bread of life, true bread that came down from heaven. So there is our Lord, fully intent on helping us to lose the scales that cover our eyes so often. And he's saying, see me, see my purpose in your life. See the will of God for you. You know, I can't think of the many places and the many scriptures, but there are, there are many places in the Bible where Jesus referred to himself as a rock, a potter, a shepherd, water of life, and the light of the world. But this time, he adds, whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Jesus is our food. What a phenomenal statement. Phenomenal. And both figurative and spiritual. First, by equating himself with bread, Jesus is saying, I am not only food, but I am essential for your life. Second, the life Jesus is referring to is not physical life, but eternal life. Jesus is trying to get all of us, all of us, including the Jews and his disciples, to stop thinking small, to stop thinking in the physical realm, to stop thinking in a box. And Jesus is saying, think big on a spiritual level. He's contrasting what he brings as our Messiah with the bread that he miraculously created the day before when he fed the multitudes. That was physical bread that perishes. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. This is the bread that brings eternal life. So yes, we do need that physical bread for our suspense, for our sustenance and to live. But yet, we also need Jesus, that spiritual bread, so that we can live in union with Christ fully and achieve eternal life. God wants you to understand that the world needs this bread. He wants you to understand today that this is the food that we need also. And that our lives is not complete without it. So yes, we may live with, with physical food. But without the spiritual food, we live in separation from Christ. 
So Jesus doesn't explain or instruct today. He's before you and he promises that if you eat the bread of the flesh of Christ, we will live in eternal life. And so the question, sisters and brothers, today is, what must we do to inherit eternal life? After all, it's about our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And in order to do that, we must receive him by faith. So what can we do? Let's clear something up first before we get to that. Wanting the blessings that Jesus provides is not the same as trusting and believing in him. For centuries, people have died for their beliefs, and some others have experienced losses, including loss of life, their jobs and livelihood, for believing in Christ. For some people, believing in God means that they anticipate things always going their way. Still others believe that this means that we wouldn't encounter problems or experience suffering. And if we have problems, some people say, well, that's because you don't have enough faith. Oh, maybe you're not praying. Or do you kneel to pray? Maybe you're just not doing it right. But Jesus says, in this world, we will have trouble. And none of those things that people tell you as you're experiencing uh, problems and real life problems that all of us have been experiencing 20 times seven since the pandemic, all of that is real. All of that is real. And Jesus reminds us that your anxiety or your stress and distress about those problems, that's not fake either. That is real. But Jesus still wants you to know that even in the midst of all of that suffering and affliction, that you can cast all of your anxieties on him. All of them. Talk to God in prayer about all of your problems. I know sometimes people see the word surrender as a total negative. He sees that as a negative, that it implies something else. But surrender yourself to the love and mercy and goodness of Jesus because God is real and God loves you. And there are people among all of us who loves us as well and want to come alongside of us and stand next to us and bring the word and, uh, and, 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 and help us to feed on the goodness of Christ when they're with us, being companions with us in the struggle. So we have to open our hearts even then and allow those people to be with us so we can experience the fullness and the love and mercy of Jesus. Those are things that we can do to trust in God and to, to grow our faith or to develop our faith. Don't let your emotions 
And it's hard. It sounds so very simple. When I say, don't let your emotions rule your life, I know it's difficult. I know that is totally a monumental hill to climb sometimes. But just because you have tried everything else and nothing else has worked, just this time, open your heart to Christ and let Jesus in. You know, Paul said, let us bow and bend with the knee of our heart. Just open our heart and let that ray of sunshine and peace and love let it in. You know, faith is not an emotion. It's a transfer of trust. And so that requires prayer. And so we have to also pray without ceasing. Study the word of God. What Christ desires is that we admit our helplessness and transfer our trust to Christ alone. So my friends, Either we understand that God must do everything else, everything for us, or we will continue clinging to the false notion that we are in charge of our own fate. And when we cling to that notion, we're separated from God. Jesus Christ desires us to come to him It is a faith that acknowledges that Jesus Christ is Lord. I encourage you to take that leap. And as we falter, and as we're thinking about it, and we continue to strive to grow our faith, May our prayer be that of Peter. Lord, you have the words of eternal life, and we believe and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Amen. and sisters in Christ. Let us pray the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. prayers of the people. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, use thine unworthy servants to give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us. And to all men, we bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all, for thy inescapable love in the redemption of the world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory, amid and we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfrainedly, thankfully, and we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service and walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the, the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. for the second shedding. God be the glory. Cynthia Ashby, Carmen Austin, Jennifer Pickle, Philip Bodas, the Baptist, Linda, 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 Sean Graham, Jamil Carr, Jeremiah Carr, Nesta Warchester, Wayne Christie, Dorothy Coates, Albert Cree, Yvonne Curlett, Brunette Curlett, Maylene Conabage, Ingrid Cummins, Cynthia De Castro, Omari Davison, Ritzton Douglas, Elsa Dryer, Odessa Edwards, Simone Edwards, Jose Estevez, Natasha Regard Fonerov, Pedro Fernandez, Carol Ferryman, Ernest and Loretta Franklin, Iris George, Alan Gentle, Lucy Gibson, David Ranger, Olga Green, Faye Green and her son Mark, Marcel Hall, Irene Harris, Cora Haywood, Adolphus and Benita Hercules, Barbara Henry, Carmen Hines, Myrna Hines, Orlando Hines, Angela Hines, Keisha Halen family, Charles Holder Jr., Pamela Herman, Bonnie Hockley, Tremaine Isaacs, Jodel Jeremy, Aubrey, Stacy, Brian, Mark, Maurice Lynn, and Maurice Jackson, Amish Lahashen, Spurgeon Johnson, Leonard Jonas, Melinda Kennedy, 
Sandra Cardini, Stanley Lee, Epiphania Lewis, Ray John Lufus, Belize Major, Catalina Martinez, Vivian Martinez, Beverly Marshall, Francis McLaughlin, Calvin McLeary, Father Miles, Keith Mitchell, Harry Morrison, Altia Moose, Diane Neves, Rudolfo Nicholas, Rose Norton, Mavis Myers, Kent Myers, Donna O'Brien, Marie Paul, Gloria Petty and her sisters, Doris Springs, Ashton Prince, Olive Reese, Marie Ramos, Merlin Richards, Kevin Richards, Kwame Robertson family, Joan Roberts, Lucinda Robinson, Denise Russell, Rita Russell, Eugene Samuels, Dolores Savory, Clotel Canterbury, Corel Silcott, Rosa Simmons, Clifford Smith, Augustine Stewart, Norma Stout, Antoinette Thomas, Clary Yosemite, Joan Vigilance, Michelle Walcott, Joan Walker, Carl Whetstone, Leonie Williams, Agnes Wilson, John, Bible, Sharon, Olga, Patricia, and Marcia Webb. Because he lives, we can face yet another day. Our Father, we gather here yet another Sunday morning as brothers and sisters to give you thanks and praise and to offer praise for the sick and shut in all around the world. Those on this list and those not on this list. Those in the hospitals, nursing home, their home, senior home. Yes, Father, both children and adults. Father, continue to give your angel charge over them. Bless, comfort, and strengthen them. Reach out and touch their body, mind, and spirit with your unfeeling power. Yes, Father, from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, so that their sickness may be turned into health and our sorrow into joy. Also, Father, strengthen their family caregivers and loved ones to be there for them. With love, patience, tolerance, and forgiveness wherever it is necessary. And Father, let them know in times like these, you're always there for them. Their anchor, that solid rock with your everlasting love, mercy, and forgiveness. Father, at this time, I pray for comfort, strength, and faith and the will to go on for the family of Sandra Edwards as they mourn the loss of a beloved mother, grandmother, sister, and friend, and all others who are mourning throughout the world. May the souls of the faithful departed continue to rest in peace and rise in glory. All this I ask in no other name but Jesus, Jesus, Jesus our loving and faithful shepherd oh yes he is the light of this world amen first for children madison ali mariah ali Justin Alvarez, Kira Brasilia, Adriana Briggs, Simara de Tomasa, Renisha Barrage, O'Shawn Barrage, Otivia Barrage, Khalil Bryan, Michaela Blyden, Malachi Jeffrey, Amari Butler, Amaya Butler, Kyrie Silcott, Rihanna Cash, Tatiana Collins, Mark Williams Jr., Khalis David, Tunia Spencer, Sivian Spencer, Samina Davenish, Quentin Davenish, Adeline Davenish, Kelani Farrell, Keone Farrell, Daniela France, Kyrie Farriman, Robert Farriman III, Santana Presley, Charlene Francis, Keone Francis, Anaya Gillette, Carl Guillaume Sain, Donovan Gladwell, Kaylin Henry, China Quetas, Savannah T. Quetas, Trinity Mendez, Emmanuel James, Malia James, Amaya Jeremy, King Jeremy, Kyrie Jeremy, 
Saria Journey, Sahil Journey, Christopher Zolte, Victoria Zolte, Sophia Lashley, Afiana Major, Aliyah Major, Adia Martinez, Tiffany Martinez, Elijah Rickard, Taylor Rickard Fonero, Jordan Rickard Fonero, Gabriel Rickard Fonero, Brooke Abram, Abraham Barry, Sydney Abraham Barry, Amasai Harrigan, Ezeli Joseph, Carl Rickard, Cameron Rickard, Jordan Walters, Lena Gaitan, Justin Minor, Cheyenne Rogers, Joseph Rogers, Kaylee Sutton, Jace Virgo, Sanaya Virgo, Alyssa Taylor Clark, Aria Taylor Clark, Ayanna Johnson, Melina Johnson, Joshua Johnson, Zephaniah Johnson, Zyla Williams, Ezra Williams Jr., Kamari Phillips, Deshauna Vaughn, Demarco Gittins, Chloe Bennett, Asia Coleman, Aaliyah O'Malley, Camille Jenkins, Terrell Laurent, Isabel Murphy, Miles Murphy, Kyra Torrey, Adrian Overstreet, Nicholas Overstreet, Alexandria Overstreet, Jada Richard, Jordana Richard, Kemora Weir, Gabriel Smith, Jaden Smith, Peyton Smith, Colin Torrey, Ashley Vidal, Ishana Vidal, Aiden O'Flaherty, Kyrie Ardane, Olivia Joseph, Malia Ellis, Amarish Benjamin, Aliyah White, Sanaya Bascom, Bastian Young, Virgil Young, Charlie Fisher, Joshua Rankin, Jameson Frank, King Reese, Anaya Frank, Stanley Smith Jr., Atomero Smith, George Williams, Keanu Williams, Chinwarin Ikebo, Chinwiki Ikebo Jr., Noah Pinter, Naomi Reese, Genesis Reese, John Reese, Carter Jean Pierre, Chase Jean Pierre, Miles Jean Pierre, Jordan Aline, Joshua Farrell, Samantha Taro, Brave Trotman, Hope Bishop, Harmony Bishop, Mia Boyce, Takara Winter Strada, Ava Utley, Sarai Washington, Isaiah Brookenbaugh, Kaylee Claxton, Medea Davis, Nayam Davis, Jabril Ndi, Alyssa Shaw, Sephora Shaw, Taya Shaw, Kayla Cabrini, Alyssa Felix, Solana Felix, Pierre Jacquet, Sidoni Wayne, Sidal Wayne, Andrew Williams Jr., Kareem Hussina, Amir McGinnis, Precious Solomon, Mackenzie Solomon Holder, Danielle Kearney, Trezar, Noah, and Chloe Petty, Vanessa Barden, Akia Davis, Dante Green, Chantal, Dante, Simonette Marie, Keisha, Miles, Tyler, Justice, Dominic, and Cooper Jones, Shia, and Carol, Yitty, and Moishi Viner, Tara, and Philip Arnold, Jaquan Knight, Jaquan Knight, Rashonda Hunt, Brianna Arthur, Denise Haynes, Denisha Haynes, Destiny Hawaii Cameron, DeMarco DeVon Hawaii Cameron, Gabriel Jean, Tawana Mays, Shlomi Goldstein, and Gabriel Edwards. Father God, we ask for your blessings today as we pray for all children who are precious gifts from you. We fear for their future when challenges come along. Praise God, we have the gift of praying for children we know and love and those around the world who may be suffering difficulties at this time. And those living in poverty, Lord, give them a sense of security and hope for a bright future. As praying for children is one of the most powerful things we can do as parents. That's why we gather together daily to lift them up to you, Lord, in prayer. Let our children discover deeper truths about who you believe they are, and let every discussion and decision they make be on a sure foundation. Thank you, God, that you have lived here as one of us, and you know what it's like to be a child and to feel everything that children feel. We thank you, Lord, that we as adults have everything we need to encourage nurture and provide for those in need. 
those who have fallen into the hands of the Lord of the law. Lord, give them wisdom to know they are covered with your grace and are not alone in their present situation. Allow godliness and righteousness to guide their thoughts and actions and help them to be a light in this dark world. All this I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Uh, military and uh, law enforcement. Laurel Brasilio, Neil Chester, Camille Dixon, Pierre Dover Default, Shannon Hartwell, Stephen Hartwell, Robert Heller, Urel Hope, Yvonne Howe, Alexandria Lewis, Jamie Lee Lewis, Marlon Moore, Faith Osborne, Nicholas Overstreet, Shelley Paris. Arnold Rickard, Tabal Rickard, Winston Sampson, Eric Stewart, Shamil Tudor, and Ian Witherborn. Our Father in Heaven, we bring our armed forces and our veterans to you. We honor those worthy men and women who give their best when called upon to serve and protect their country. Bless them, Lord, for their unselfish service and the continual struggle to preserve our freedom, safety, and the heritage of our country for all of us. Help our troops be strong in tasks before them. Draw them to you so that they will delight in your word and desire to follow you with their whole heart. May they find time daily to pray and seek your wisdom and your guidance. Give them the, the insight they need to protect our country and stay safe in whatever mission they're carrying out. Give our leaders understanding to make right decisions affecting our country and our armed forces. May our leaders and our troops exercise integrity, honesty, and valor as they serve. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Are there any birthdays today? But let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be with you. Good morning, St. Thomas. Good morning, St. Thomas family and friends. So thankful that we can spend another Sunday to gather here in person and virtually to worship God and praise God. Because we know God is our refuge and God is our strength. Amen. Do we have any visitors here for the first time here in person? Anyone here for the first time in church? or anyone on a virtual line. If there's anyone worshiping with us on a virtual line, they can open their minds and say hello. Okay. One family again. Amen. 
Our condolences to Janet Walters and her family for the passing of her sister, Hope Castor. May God give comfort to Janet and her family at this time of their grief. Janet is sitting here. I condolence to Janice, Janet. If anyone wants to offer any birthday blessings or any memorials, they can text their information to 718-710-1257. Or they can call the office. You know, the office number also is 718-453-2315. Let me make sure I get it right. 453-718-452-2332. When you need any spiritual upliftment, and you know, with, with everything going on in the world today, we could all use spiritual food and spiritual upliftment. Any spiritual inspirations. We have a, a prayer group that's available Monday to Friday at 12 noon. You can come in anytime. It's a virtual group. And you can pray and offer any prayers or blessing or anything. Anything that's heavy on your mind and so on, you can join us on Monday to Friday at 12 noon. And we have our Bible studies after the prayer group on Thursdays. And it's always God's word that continue to fill us and teach us and inspire us. Because we can never get enough of God's word. Amen. And I just also want to continue to remind you of our bazaar. Let's make note, please put it on the calendar for September 18th. The celebrating 150th anniversary church bazaar will be from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Of course, there's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of culture, a lot of music, and a lot of food. Okay, invite your family and friends and neighbors or, you know, anyone, you know, that you could just offer and you just let them know that, you know, it's going to be just a day of celebration, fun-filled day. And we all know that this bazaar is just, you know, we're, we're, we're all involved in it because it's all for the good of the church. You know, all the funds and the proceeds are going to be going towards the elevator because, you know, that's an ongoing thing and that's going to be something that's, you know, one day we're going to, you know, we're going to see it into fruition and we're all going to benefit from it. And I just want to thank Reverend Deacon Denise Galloway. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for listening, for lifting us up with your son and for inspiring us, for filling us with the word of God and the love of God. Thank you so much for being with us. We're present here. We embrace and we appreciate you greatly today. Thank you so much, Reverend Galloway. And I just another announcement here for the Cooper Street Block Festival and Health Fair. It's between Evergreen and Central Avenue. It's going to be Saturday, August 21st, from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. And it's going to be uh, a lot of health plans, wellness, mental hygiene, family counseling, nutrition, spiritual, and more. It's going to be live entertainment, special guests, RB scene groups, and um, a lot of giveaways and so on. And you have a lot of sponsors here. so. If you're able to put that on your calendar also and come out to another festive, another festive day right in the area in our neighborhood. And that's all the announcements for today. And just hope that you, everyone, have a wonderful day and enjoy your week. Another wonderful week. Thank you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his court. Okay. 
Brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace, love, and serve the Lord.
Walk out the bedroom, walk out the mines. God favors me. I speak life and prosperity, and I speak them. God favored me. Yes, yes, yes. God favored me. Yes, yes, yes. God favored me. Yes, yes, yes. When I could think about my story. And I know me from you love me, and I know you favor me because you love me as the triumph but triumph over me. Yes, they try but triumph over me. Oh, Lord, I'm in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, oh 